I guess one of the biggest problems I had in my do-it-yourself install of solar panels was coming up with the location. And the reason why the location is so important is uh, because it determines the amount of production uh, that your panels will produce, which is directly related to the return on investment of your project. Um, so I'd like to discuss the major constraints that I ran into um, on the placement of my panels. And I'd have to say the major constraints were the fire code, where the fire department needed access to the roof surface that I was placing my panels. And then the other thing was roof elements, um, where I had to possibly plan for a checkerboard um, install like this, which complicated the installation and also added to cost. And the other thing was the roof elements themselves also had possibly, you know, had shading associated with them. So I had to go up to the roof at different times of the day and check out the shading on my potential um, installation site. So what I'd like to do right now with this video is discuss those two constraints, the, um, the fire code, and I'll give you a link to the detailed uh, fire um, setback and pathway rules in 2018. And I'll also discuss a little bit about um, the possibility of cutting these vents off and putting panels over them and the new code that you might might be able to use to help you uh, mitigate those problems with the vents. So in 2018 um, they have a modified roof setback uh, rules and but they haven't worked their way to the city yet. Um, as of say October of 2018. So I think what you'll have to do is read these um, this this um, link that I'm going to give you and come up uh, with um, your plan layout and make sure that it complies with the 2018 modified um, setbacks. And they implemented this in California in July of 2018. Um, uh, let me show you how this impacted my decision um, on w something that I was going to do. I was going to put panels here right underneath the bedroom and then it required a 36 inch uh, pathway right here. Well it messed up my design and it made it way too expensive and not worth it to use this location. So I had to move on to a different uh, section of the roof. Um, so what we'll do is now let's take a look at the this these vents and the new code that we might be able to um, use for these um, vents. Um, what people have been doing is um, they've been constructing these rather elaborate um, vent diversion devices, or even going um, into the you know the of course the the thing that you usually do is you'll burn up some extra rail and you'll put the spacing between the vents. Um, but wouldn't it be nice if we could just cut these this vent off here? As it turns out, there is new code that allows you to cut the vent right here and um, have the vent stub up on the underside of these panels. And that code is also in the links, but it basically sets up a, um, a two inch, um, a, you can cut the vent at two inches. Now, I don't know how long your flashing is going 
to be on the vent, but it allows you to lock the vent off and put it underneath the panel. There are some limitations with how close to the panel that you're going to get and what kind of screening that you're going to need to protect that vent. There's also a podcast that I'd like you to listen to that I, I will put into the um, the notes and it's a very detailed description on the new setback rules in 2018 and the new plumbing code. Anyway, I wish you luck on your project.